it time for me to sing? Okay, yeah. Going, going, going live! Yay! On a Thursday. It is a Thursday. All day. Yeah, and it's apparently the last clap for carers, although if you choose to carry on on your own street, then that's fine. But it's the last official clap for carers tonight. So because we think it will take a little bit longer because people want to give a last hurrah, uh, we're going to finish just before eight o'clock tonight to go and do that. There's a guy around the corner from me who gets his drums out, so I think there'll be like some drum rolls and stuff going on tonight. More than likely. It's one of those things, isn't it? You've just got to be flexible. <laughs> I mean, I have to take my NHS sign down. So what have you been up to today? Today I have, I don't know if you can see, um, hang on. Let me get round, position my body. Can you see? Oh, yeah. So Callum and I went out at half nine. He was finishing off cleaning the decking. And I got the varnish out to varnish all the back doors and windows. And then Caitlin came and joined us at about half ten. Mm -hmm. and she started painting one of the fences all right so all three of us were out there busy 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 it was great about... it's all a bit keen isn't it i know i couldn't believe it callum was the first one to go in at about half 12 one i think he'd finished his job so he went and had a shower i'd finished doing the doors so i went and helped caitlin was doing the fence mm -hmm. and we finished probably about one half one right i think i was out there for about four hours in total come in had my lunch had a nap all that sun it's just too much it is isn't it it is far too yeah. much so yeah i haven't done anything constructive this afternoon but i think that was enough really oh well what have you been up to? You've been you've been a better girl than me. You've been actually making things. So I've been swatching. There's That's a variety cool. of patterns on there. There's like a um, it's, it's, it's like a, a variation of English rib. Yeah. And then the one above. There's a line of stockinette, and then there's I think it's called furrow rib or something like that. It's a another variation of English rib. Um, and then we've got double moss stitch and then more stuck in it. Um, that one is dot stitch. I like that. Uh, and then this one. Yeah. yeah. I think that's called granite stitch. And then the one above that will be sea sucker stitch, if ever I can get it right. I get to about the sixth row and then I'm not sure if I should be knitting or purling or purling or knitting. I think I've gone off a stitch on that one, so I'll have to look at that one again and pull it back. Uh, and this is some uh, Starcraft Special DK, and the colour is blush. You see, it's quite a warm pink. Mm. It's lovely with that top. Yeah, it's not, not fashion at all, is it? Very, very subtle warm pink. And I quite like it with this storm blue. Yeah. Both of those go with that top, strangely enough. Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? But um, and I can't remember if I'd showed you this. I still haven't got around to looking for buttons for it, but I think I showed you this the other day. Oh, the other day, um, you haven't done the hood. Yeah, well, it's, it has a hood now, which is all fully textured. Gorgeous. In the double moss, and I had to do the pearl borders again, and. It's just got a couple of little seams on the top. Yeah, because last time I spoke to you on Tuesday, you'd done the cuff and then you pulled it out and then you did it again. That's right. And well, you, all the cuffs are done now. Yeah, and you hadn't done you hadn't done the the front bordery things, I think. Oh, they're all done. They're just waiting on buttons. And as I always do with baby things, um, unless I know for certain. It, they've got buttonholes on both sides. 
Uh, so and then we'll right, I'll decide them. who they're going to and then I'll put buttons on and I close them up as I saw the buttons on. There you go, see? It just gives you that flexibility. I, I like the fact that I've got a choice. Yeah. So productive. You're such a better girl than me. I know. I'm naughty. I haven't done anything. Well, I've done a couple of things. Let me just take this needle out. Um, I'll have to put a needle in across it because obviously there's no buttons or anything and it'll fall apart otherwise. But I'm on the second sleeve oh. of the ballet wrap card again. I just love that. It's gorgeous. It is, it's just gone with plain garter borders, nothing fancy. It's just too cute. And it's top down sleeves. Three needle bind off on the shoulders. I've put the instructions to if you just want to cast off and see. I definitely need to have a go at that for my granddaughter. Because some people will prefer that and that's fine. And little cute garter borders. I love and that. I went with the main colour for the borders this time, whereas on the one I did the other day, I used the contrast colour for the borders. So it doesn't really matter. Which one you do? Uh, this was the third size, which is... That not uh, that's about not to, to three months, something like that. I'd have to look it up, but it's about an 18 inch chest. It's to fit a 16 to 18 inch chest baby. So it's a, a sort of newborn size. And that's how much of the brand new ball of mocker is left. So there's tons of yarn and I've got a sleeve to do. But And again, this was pretty much a brand new ball of the antique. <laughs> Um, and I thought I might experiment with the next thing that I make with duck egg and storm blue. I think they look lovely together. And again, go with my top. Everything is going with that top tonight. <laughs> it's fab, that top. Yeah, even the lapis blue. If I bring that over, even that goes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, how coordinated am I? <laughs> You're just perfect. Yvonne's with us. Hi Yvonne, how are you doing? Uh, we're finishing um, just before eight today. Um, we're, it's, the, it's the last of the planned claps for carers tonight, so we think it'll kind of drag on a bit longer and people will make sort of a, a last hurrah for it. That's what we're we're we might be completely wrong, but. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll oh, see. what what have you got for dinner, Yvonne? I've just had some. Um, it was a similar world recipe. It was pork and lemon meatballs, mm. and I had that with leftover potato salad from lunch. Sounds nice. It was good. Um, I was going to do some uh, golden vegetable rice with it, but then Jake's not that keen on rice, so. We came downstairs as I was sorting out my um, lacto-free Greek yogurt and my frozen fruit because I leave that out. And then the jelly is still setting in the fridge. So I'll have that later, possibly while we're on air. I shall pick that. Um, when it comes downstairs, uh, uh, what, what are you making for dinner? What are you making? I said, I've made it. There's some meatballs in the pan there. Have you had yours? No. Then he comes out of the kitchen, back into the living room and goes, have you had yours? No. <laughs> you seen that? I've just made it. Oh. Was he <laughs> like So it was a big pan full and he's left me about that much. <laughs> it's fine. Does he think you're on a diet or something? I don't know. I just, he turned, what was it I'd made the other day? Um, salmon, uh, sweet potato chips and some salad. Yeah, just homemade uh, sweet potato chips. I'd, I'd sprinkled them with like chip sprinkle or something like that for a bit of flavour and then just wanged them in the oven with the salmon. And that was all fine. But I'd no sooner got it out of the oven, I'd even got it onto the plates and he was downstairs. Oh, oh, oh what are you doing? What are you doing? Like no filling him. And he, he wandered off upstairs having poured half a bottle of sweet chilli sauce onto it. And then was back two minutes later and I said, well, do you forget something? I finished it. 
I come to get something else. Is that? Yeah, possibly. So I've been sketching. Oh, let me do that one. I don't know if you can kind of see yeah, that. Yeah, I can see that. There's going to be a little v-neck jacket and it it will have sort of an airline skirt to it. I don't know how much you can see, but I want the back. I've been playing around with stitch patterns for something fluted or pleated mm. so that the increases are within the pattern. You don't have to do the folding for the pleats or anything clever. And then just a garter band to cover the transition between one pattern and the other and then probably a texture pattern or something on the sleeves and then I want to do um, a shawl collar probably a ribbed shawl collar and have it like a little coat um, and then the option where you can just do the sort of v-neck with the shawl collar and it just be a little dress yeah that was my thinking on that one God, you yeah. going on at the minute haven't you mm. Something to do, um, and then I quite like these. You know these little. Can you see that angel tops? Oh yeah. So I'm thinking some sort of lacy yoke flowers yeah. or something. Little garter sleeves so that it's easy to make them longer or shorter uh, to suit the weather wherever someone is. And then a simple eyelet lace in stripes with either some sort of texture or a dot stitch or something just so that it looks kind of delicate and pretty so that was me thinking on that one yeah and another one yeah so it's a little cardi i've just shown a sort of sleeveless version with a bit of ribbing right i want to use um this vertical rib pattern here because it okay. kind of these, this is all done on four mil needles using DK. And I just yeah. want to see if it gathers in or anything. And it doesn't really. It's quite a flat pattern. So I think it's suitable for the upper bodice and the shoulders uh, to give it that vertical line. And then I don't know whether I'll do kind of garter bands or ribbing. Um, and I'm thinking dot stitch for the lower part. I don't know. I'm a big fan of the garter band as well. Well, I think you can't go wrong with it. And um, I do like to increase my stitches and drop my needle far so that you've got a firmer band that isn't going to flop and stretch and curl yeah. over and stuff when you're not watching it. So yeah, that's kind of where well done, I've been, you. Yeah, where I've been kind of had my head for the last few days. Yeah, you've definitely got some kind of designing bug going on for the last few weeks. Can't keep up with you. Yeah, I've still got an idea in my head about a lady's top, but I've just had to kind of shelve it and ignore it because otherwise I won't get this done and this is to go with the collection and it has to be done. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm slapping a bit, I'm afraid. I need to kick up the bum. God, oh. P isn't keen on rice either, Yvonne's saying. We like rice, Miss Callum. See, I love rice. Mm. Goes with everything, really. Oh, Yvonne's not really been crafting last week either. Is that because the weather's been really good or have you just been busy? Or... But she started a new summer shirt. No. Um, is that something that you're knitting or is this a sewing project? Oh, right. So she's saying what knit on that now. So that's answered that question because it needs a, pro you go. a provisional cast on and the, sh the short row shaping for the shoulders. Yeah, not the thing to do while people are gassing and chatting around you, is it? You need a blanket or, something, or a garter stitch project or knitted in the round. A super simple sock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something like that. Something like that. I really need to get my knitting mojo back, I tell you. It's just that there, there's so much to do. And I just want to make good use of the weather, really, I suppose. Well, you don't know what it would be like later. Oh, I've got a message from some Emma Sadler woman going, are you there? Yeah. Panic that was, message. <laughs> that was like, literally, I sent that as you sent me the link. So that was quite funny. Oh, well. So no yarn, Dale. Surprise, surprise. Mm. To be honest, it was a bit of a given, really, wasn't it? 
it was it was a shame but it was absolutely expected and i think they've made the right decision in the circumstances uh, there was some talk on facebook the other day about virtual wool fest oh. kind of little mm -hmm. online i'm not sure what they're going to do or how they're going to do it but that will be quite nice supposed to be the end of next month wasn't it yeah and i think i'm gonna have to buy a new phone oh no what's wrong with yours well this isn't technically that it's not working it's running out of memory space and i can't clear it because the android version is stuck at number six it's a blade zte7 and zte stopped doing mobile phones with absolutely no warning a number of years ago and then stopped issuing updates for them and the latest version of android is much higher i think it might even be up to 11 or something like that i may be wrong no. but it doesn't matter what it is it's certainly not six or anything close to six yeah um and i'm just worried really because the version that i've got at the moment is secure Mm -hmm. But one month, two months, three months, while all these hackers are at home and have got beggar all else to do, will it yeah. continue to be secure? And it's struggling to connect to my Fitbit. It's falling over on all sorts of other stuff. And I've had yeah, it, 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 don't they? And then they're not supported on the old. Yeah, and I've had it four yeah. years, and I have my iPhone 4S for about eight years. I, I am, you know, I do get a phone and keep it till it's totally knacked really um so I, I don't know what to do um sky had some really good uh, which is who my mobile uh, sim is with um had some really good deals on ipads which would be much more practical and they had a good one on the iphone se which I've no real knowledge about. I would have to sit down the technical spec. I think 11 is the new one. I, I don't know. I'm sure that there's another one that's not a number that's just come out. Is it the XS? Or, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, whichever it is, it wasn't a bad price. And because I've made with them for yonks, I get a discount on it. And I could do that and it wouldn't be too painful. <laughs> So I'm dithering about do I do that? And then I thought, surely an iPad is a different beastie. And yeah. I know you can do FaceTime with an iPad, but can you use iPad as a phone if you've got a SIM card? I don't know, but I, I think if you were out and about at the shops and it rang, you'd feel like a bit of a din picking it yeah. up and walking it's, in it. Just, yeah, I'm just conscious of the fact that my eyes it's getting harder and harder to read stuff on my phone yeah it's just i think that if you need a phone you need a phone because you can't put an ipad in your pocket and mm. go off and see your mum or whatever because you know from monday we can meet six people in the park oh was that as was then was that announced was it on tonight? that was announced tonight by bojo okay uh, you can now meet six people and they don't necessarily have to be from the same household. Just make sure that you're two metres apart. So, you know, you're in the park going to meet mum and dad and one of them rings you, where are you? And you've got this big iPad. Oh, Yvonne's very kindly saying she likes the sketched ideas. Oh, That's brilliant. Good. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, you? She's put a link to the Zaftig tea. Did I say that properly? Uh, by Sheila Toy. Um, shall I share that? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Um, do, you normally, um, do you normally buy? Oh, that's really nice. Isn't it cute? I would want that a lot longer, or I would yeah. want an Empire Line dress underneath, underneath it. Yeah. It's sort of floofed out from under the ribbing and hid all of my um, excess baggage. You know what used to be my boobs, but is now sort of belly number two. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I really do like that. I think that would look lovely with a summer dress, wouldn't it? I love that cocktail. So I've, I'm probably going to hit myself in the face now by asking this question. What colour are you doing this in, Yvonne? Because I think, and I could be wrong, 
Uh, so that's the Saftig tea by Sheila Toy Stromberg. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. Did you, I like the way you had a nice little zoom in on the boobies there. Well, you know, it's got to be done. You need to know how much of the girls are on show with the lady <laughs> stuff. Can you see? She, she, has, she hasn't even got a bra on, though, has she? Uh, I think that's a, a hint of a bra there. I think. It, oh, right. OK. But she's she's quite a nice, petite little girl, isn't she? Bless her. Yeah. It's either a grey bra or it's yeah. a married lady bra that's gone grey. <laughs> We've all got those. Oh, see, she's done it a lot bigger. Yeah, I think that's too big on her. That's too big. That just looks a bit. What's the word? And that one. Go up, go up. That one there, that purple one. It's that yeah, one. Gorgeous. Look at that. Look at her tummy. Oh no. And look there. at that colour. Look at that colour. I mean, it's oh. beautiful. Uh, it looks silky, doesn't it? it oh, I like tell that us one what the yarn is. Blue one. Oh, it doesn't tell us what the yarn is, but there you are. Sorry, the, the blue fig. That one, that one, yeah. Okay, Come let's down. look at that. See, this is what happens, Yvonne. We go down an absolute rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, well, look at that. I wonder, what was that? Okay. Not, so, not the blue bit on the sleeve, though, to be honest. Uh, there's some Odine Wool's Superwash Sock. Midnight Cravings Yarn Company Sweet Sock. Uh, Midnight. Yeah, uh, Cravings Yarn Company Sweet Sock. So co colours are Spiced Latte, Seven mm. Seas, Dry Leaves and Denim Light Wash. Uh, that's just beautiful. As soon as I, I saw those colours, I thought that's it. She's going to be all over that. Yeah, but I, just, I don't like, even though it's blue, I don't like that bit on the arm. I think it's too blue. Yeah, it's a little bright, isn't it, compared yeah. to the others. But I like that purple and green one as well. Uh, that one, yeah. Nitpick stroll hand painted. Look at how it's pooled. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So there's two different colours there. Uh, yeah. What she used. Oh, I love that top. Borealis make believe hand painted. So how's that made then? The that... pooling. No, how how's the actual? What's the construction there then? Because well, that look. picture had the hole in the middle and it was like out flat, wasn't it? Worked from the top down, so the lower body lace ends exactly where we want it to. The lace and the body of the top is pretty straightforward. The only loop I have in store for you is the shoulder shaping. The shoulders are worked with a provisional cast on, and then short rows are used. To give the shoulder shape in a gentle curve, this sneaky trick allows for well-shaped shoulders without the need to seam later. Sounds fun. It does look like a fun one. I think I'd want to do a, a longer version. I'd have to have a, a good look through those, but I think that's going to be lovely. So, Yvonne, nitpicks comfy fingering in gorgeous purple, and she's making hers longer. She looks good in the purple. Knew there had to be some purple there. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. There's that a couple of plus size ladies here who haven't made it as big, uh, but they're not showing what size they've made. So I, I think if I were going to make it, I would probably message them and say, what size did you do? Yeah. <laughs> because I think that sometimes you know, the problem is... It doesn't hurt to ask, does it? Well, it doesn't hurt if you're if you're a bigger lady. It All right, so Yvonne's saying you. start with the shoulders separately with that provisional cast on, and that's where All she's right. got for now. So um, it, it I, looks like a very clever construction, and I love a prov cast on. As do you, so you know. Yeah, I just I just think sometimes bigger ladies make. Emma, is your volume shape. gone? Can you not hear me? Or are you? I'm still here. Oh, okay. Oh, it's because I'm looking on the Facebook one and you're talking about oh. the cost. It's because I've muted it. <laughs> Why can't I hear her talking? <laughs> um, yeah, I was just looking at those ladies, the bigger ladies that have mm. made really unshapely ones. And I think sometimes, and I was guilty of doing it myself, just because you're a bigger lady doesn't mean 
that you need to wear like an oversized tent and i think yeah. sometimes that makes you look even bigger i think keeping it close to your body and, and keeping the shaping and everything actually can be quite slimming yeah there's a purpley one um i think the lady's called v8 applesauce and she's done it quite a snug fit and that's really flattering on her mm -hmm. i think it looks really really good um, so yeah, yeah. There, there is a temptation to go too tent like and it doesn't help that the fashion of late has been big shapeless boxes hanging off thin yeah. um, mm -hmm. and that might look really great on audrey hepburn but it doesn't necessarily look as wonderful on us you know unless we look at the size and think about the ease it's definitely a twiggy style i think anybody with a bust for definite and especially i mean i found it myself if it's right up here mm. it makes me look huge it's just too much that's why i like something down here because I've, I've always been bigger it just it makes this area too I big i feel like i'm falling out of my bra there <laughs> See, no, really it's it's fine. <laughs> let the girls out it's fine nobody's it's nobody's all day no one will notice <laughs> uh, yeah so I, I i are you you're not partaking of a drink tonight then uh, no, I'm going to have jelly and Greek yogurt and blueberries and hopefully not tip them all over myself. Is that your sins? Mm, it is. Um, I mean, I've got sins to spare, to be honest. I've not updated my thing, so how many yeah. have you used? Uh, well, I'm having a blood orange vodka and lemonade oh that sounds good Aww. yeah i've used six sins uh, right including all of things like my mayo and my uh potato salad and the yogurt i had this morning and things like that uh so i'm good for about another 14 sins if i want to mm -hmm. That's good then. Mm. Um, the Greek yogurt oh. will be four and a half. There'll be two for the whole pint of jelly. Wow. So I can eat the whole bowl if I want it with the yogurt and the, the blueberries. That's nice jelly. Food. So yeah, uh, I mean, I could, I could pour a gin over it, I suppose. <gasps> Should make the vodka jellies. Um, Jay, it's got the vodka. And my really? whiskey. That's where my whiskey is. I've had a really naughty day. I don't know what is wrong with me. I've just felt so hungry. I haven't stopped eating all day. Do not think that's because you've been busy doing stuff all day. Well, I don't know because it started as soon as I woke up. Well, if you had a week where you've been busy doing stuff in the garden. I suppose, and I've been running as well still. Mm. Mm. Yeah, might be a bit of a Sherlock moment there. <laughs> I know, but even so, I shouldn't be eating that much. Well, have you had something that's triggering it? Have you not eaten regularly enough or do you I need a snack? Or... I don't know. Do you need a bit know. more protein or something like that? I did a gammon joint yesterday. Oh, Yvonne's having a beer. Well done, Yvonne. What sort of beer are you having? Uh, I had a fault in the tuna for my tea. Yes, so Yvonne's saying, like we were just saying earlier, about that she likes no ease or a little bit of negative ease. And even though she's a, a little bit bigger now and has a noticeable belly, well, I don't mm -hmm. really see it in your photographs, but if you tell me that's the case i'll believe you but in boxy stuff she says she looks shorter and wider than she is and i, I totally agree with that I, I end up looking like a short fat brick in boxy clothing it just does me no favors me too yeah it's, it's <laughs> yeah and you know sort of audrey hepburn kind of figure for it it's 
you know, it, it doesn't suit all of us, does it? No, definitely not. So I are you going to tell everybody you know. about your decision over your silvers? Uh, I was going to just sort of like, you know, come on one day, look at them. I like them. Yeah, they're not too bad at the minute, but what happens when they get all the way down here? Because when I have my hair up at the minute, I think it is quite aging. I don't know. Anyway, I've decided I'm going to go lighter. I've ordered a dye. We'll see what happens when it arrives. I might put it on, I might not. I think it'd be fine. What, the dye of silvers? Well, I like either. But I think the fine. I think you found the right depth of colour. Yeah. And, the, you know, it's it's a nice, cool one. And worst case scenario, it goes wrong. The um, hairdressers are opening in July, apparently. Even though I think there'll be a big, long queue and you'll be lucky to get an appointment. Right. Um, and I won't be the only one that's turning up with dodgy hair. Well, Yvonne's saying that she holds her breath for pictures and doesn't show the ones with the belly. Yeah, careful posing. Yeah, that. yeah that's good. <laughs> Put that on the list of tips to try. Thank you. Did she learn that in a year with my camera? <laughs> Very possibly. I, I'm mm -hmm. so far behind with that, but it was beyond the settings of my little camera, and then all this started, and I've just been either. I mean. This is episode 62, for goodness sake. <laughs> I didn't even start it. No, it's just, uh, yeah. I'm terrible. I'm really bad. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then I go, squirrel! Yeah, well, yeah. no. It's <laughs> fine. Um... <laughs> Slimming World have got a new cookbook coming out and it's all Ooh. for pasta. So I figured I would get some gluten free flour and make my own pasta. So I've got yep. gluten free flour and the book should be here in a few days. I think that's that coming with parcel for, so probably early next week sometime. Um, what on earth was it called? It had a clever name. Cool. Which made, made me laugh at the time. Um, where is it? Is it going to be at the bottom of the page? Oh, a passion for pasta and noodles. Cool. Um, but all the videos and stuff that they've been sharing on Facebook and things like that have been coming up with things like pasta delicious and mm. the sorts of. Oh, if I'm like me, is very behind with a year on my camera, and she learned about the. This sort of posing and breathing and stuff before that's really good it may it obviously makes a difference to the photographs and if you're happier with them that's brilliant i try to remember i'm gonna give that a go i need to sit up straight so that's my <laughs> keep your chin up as well because sometimes you you get a, like a double chin without realizing it don't you so if you keep your chin up in photos i always do that when when um, there was a, part, a couple of park run photos in a week, like a couple of weeks in a row of me with the, the like, like that. And I was like, every time I had a photo taken, I was like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, all I did was move one foot. Don't move. Yeah, it's because Marcus asleep under my feet and Coco's asleep in front of her, lying on her to say, you're asleep under mum's feet and I'm not happy about it. Yes. And, as soon as, and as soon as I moved, that was it. That was all the fuss. I'll just move one leg. <laughs> Don't even move a single muscle. Yeah, the both there on motion detect. They've decided that they're not eating the kibble. They're doing the, we're really starving and nobody loves us. Oh, I lie. Somebody has eaten the kibble invisibly and silently. And oh, under 20 yeah. minutes, yeah. Well, yeah, they probably carried it in and out to the back garden and sort of crunched it out of earshot and then come back in. But what they're pestering for is I cooked some gammon yesterday. 
Um, I know that I've got some in the fridge because every time I get a little bit hungry, I wander in and just have a wee snack out of gammon. Um, and we think it's ours. Yeah. We think that all roast meat, anything that goes in that oven, is for cookers. I had um, I had some salad for my tea. And what I tend to do is when I go shopping, mm. uh, the next day I'll chop all my veggies up and put them in like six pots so it's just portioned ready so i put in raw um peppers cucumbers carrots and tomatoes and i always like cut the cat uh, cut the cucumbers and, and scoop all the seeds out i don't like the seeds it's too watery so it's just the the like the half moon shapes and i got some for tea out tonight got a portion out and the cucumbers were on the turn so uh, i chucked them in the bowl for Arthur for his dinner he thought I'd given him the world yeah, isn't it's it? funny isn't it yeah I gave these two half an apple the other day each a yeah smaller apple and I'd already had mine for the day and I thought well we can have this one there's some fresh ones in the bowl put it up put it down and I bet if I go into that bed now those half apple pieces will be wrapped up in the bedding hidden just fermenting yeah quietly rotting but if i go and get an apple from the fruit bowl now and come and sit here yeah everybody will be doing that and drooling all over my feet <laughs> all they want is the monkey car out the middle snipped in two with the scissors because everything, everything has to be scrupulously fair That's uh, it. nobody gets any more than anybody else unless they're the one on the receiving end of the bigger portion so if you put some um, squeezy cheese on the top of the apple, would they eat it or would they just lick the cheese off? Um, they would probably lick the cheese off and then eat the apple to say right. thank you for the cheese. They love cheese. Yeah, Arthur does. I normally, if it's apples going bad in the um, in the bottom of the bowl, like you say, you get new ones and they're getting a little bit wrinkly because nobody's eating them. I core it, take the core out fill the hole with cheese and give it to him and he chases it round for half an hour and then eats it well, they're, they're really quite funny um they won't eat banana <gasps> arthur loves banana no they won't eat banana um mock is very much of the view that poached chicken uh gammon salmon egg salmon trimmings well just all the salmon really yeah yeah. No, you, you, humans in the house should be vegetarian and just buy it all for us. It's all theirs. Mm -hmm. And the second that oven goes on, the, the harassment starts with the we quite like some of that. It's the some for us, it's the some for us. And then yeah. times I cook an extra chicken breast and then just snip it up and quietly put it in with the kibble. They're, they're not saying uh, is there some for us? What they're saying is why are you eating my meat? Yeah, it could be that. I think so. Well, I'm getting the I'm so cute off Mocker at the moment. I'm so cute, don't you want to feed me lots of meat? Yeah, whereas Coco's going, yeah, you can rub my hip, but I'd really rather you just rub my boobs with your foot. Arthur likes you to scratch his bum. Oh, they like that as well. Just <laughs> rub the tail, a big scratchy scratch, yeah. Yeah, it's lots of licking nothing in the air. I don't know why they lick. And being girls, they always push the tail to one side whenever you put any pressure on their rear. Uh, um, ready for action is what it's all about. It's not going to get any off me. <laughs> or anybody without paperwork. Well, exactly. No pedigree, no poke. Exactly. <laughs> you tell them. You put your foot down with a firm hand. Well, someone did try and say to me that they had a labradoodle lab and that, um, you know, should should braid. And I said, well, no. Oh, I was saying that she watched some videos on YouTube and Blueprint about posing when she first tried to get pattern model photos. Oh, I'll have to have a look at those while we've still got Blueprint. I've got one on Blueprint. I've got... um. What's it called? Hang on, I'll have a look. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I, I 
it's one of the first ones I got, actually, I think. All right. Let me have a look. Class library. My own forever library, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering what's going to happen with that. They're going to have to do so. It still says it. Uh, 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 well, uh, there's still emails coming out trying to flog your memberships. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, I'll have to have a look for that class, Yvonne. Thank you. Where is it? It's my one. Sizing. Oh, where's that gone then? I had one. Ah, shoot it. Uh, product photography primer with Caro Sheridan. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, it was all right. I just never remember any of it. No, I always have to go back. <laughs> yeah. Go through. So I'm hoping we'll be able to at least download those classes. Well, I went on to what was the Craftsy app. It's still called Craftsy on my phone. I assume they just couldn't be bothered to update it. And when I went into the class, you could download all the individual. So you'd go into a class and it'd let you download in the individual lessons. So I'm assuming that you can watch them when you're offline. Right. But I'm thinking... I don't want to do that because if I download all my classes, each individual lesson, my phone is going to be absolutely full in the memory. Well, and, then, and the thing is, if you try and get the Crafty app now, you can't. And there is exactly. a blueprint app. So They've really not thought this through, have they? What What am I going to do then? And I can't get them off my phone and onto something else. The only thing I think I could do is maybe the same onto my iPad, but then it's the same problem. I've got my iPad full up of stuff then, haven't I? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm probably, I mean, I've got Camtasia and I can screen record and things like that, but that's just fundamentally wrong because it's a breach of copyright. It's up to right. them to provide it in a format that we can use because they've sold it as a forever class. Yeah, and they didn't have a lot with us about going. And I've got the email from them when they went from Craftsy to Blueprint mm -hmm. and the subscription model, where they promised faithfully that I would have lifetime access. So when they moved to Blueprint, because uh, I never really bothered, I had when I had Craftsy, I did buy quite a few. I think I've got about thirty classes. But I've barely watched any of them. There's some in there that I've not even looked at yet. Oh, I've and watched all of mine at least once. I haven't. Some I go back to on a regular basis. Maybe not the sewing ones, but the any knitting or crochet. Yeah. No, there's there's some on there that I've got that I wanted. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'll watch that at some point, And then I've never got round to it. As but there's still things that I want to watch. I'm still interested in them. Yeah. So what's going to happen with those? But then when it went to Blueprint, was it subscription only or could you still just buy individual classes? You can just get into, uh, individual classes. Right. It's, but it's whether lifetime access means lifetime access. Absolutely. Yeah. Because <laughs> were they trying to encourage people to go more the subscription route when they went to Blueprint? They were, and I've been a subscriber for a while. Yeah. Um, and I just pay it every month and I don't really think about it because I, I will go on and watch stuff and I'll watch uh, a whole course or two or three or something like that over a weekend. Mm. There's something I want to work on or just refresh on or just for a change. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I do find it valuable and it is cheaper than buying. I, I would certainly spend more than that buying classes through a year. Mm. So I don't know whether the fact that they've tried to, I can understand that it's logical that if you've got income of whatever and then it goes yeah. down and up and down and up and down and up, that you would want to flatten that to a regular amount of subscription income that you can kind of rely on like bread and butter. Yeah. yeah. And I can you see that. In courses and stuff as well, can't you? Yeah, but whether they've priced it too high or too low, I don't know. Um, I've never really heard anyone complain about the annual fee or the monthly fee. Right. Or be put up, or be massively put off. And they do periodically where you get a week where you can watch anything and everything. 
uh, free anyway, whether you're a subscriber or not. So I don't know what's gone wrong within that organisation, but the classes have changed since it right. became um, part of, I think it's NBC or somebody that bought a major stakeholding, and it became more about the entertainment and less about the education. Um, and I don't know whether crafters at that point thought, no, this is not one. Because yeah. yeah. well, um, the grocery girls who do their podcast on YouTube once, it's usually a Thursday night or a Friday night, one a week. Yeah. Um, they a couple of Canadian lasses. Um, they had four or five series of, on there of something called Hold Your Needles, where they chatted away about yarn and and they focused on whatever knit alongs or crochet alongs were going on and what yarns were available in kits. And it was quite good. Um, and there were one or two tips and techniques and things like that. But it, it wasn't anything that I couldn't have got on YouTube from someone else, mm -hmm. completely nothing. So I don't really see what the value was to me as a crafter to have entertainment when entertainment is already out there. Well, I was going to say, do you think that a lot of it is because people would rather just go to YouTube, even for the, I mean, there's a lot of good tutorials on YouTube. There's some really brilliant tutorials for free, um, some really good educational content. Mm. Uh, I don't know, what do you think, Yvonne? Do you, are you a subscriber or do you just have you, you for a... Because I was, when, when it was crafty, I was happy to pay for courses because I felt, you know, supporting fellow makers and all the rest of it. And I was happy to do that. Um, and then also I had my patterns on there and I, I got a bit annoyed with the, with, did you sell your patterns on there ever? Um, I did and then I got, there was a call wasn't there of yeah they literally just sent yeah. you an email and said sorry see you later and i'd also done one for the um you know the cloudborn um oh yeah yeah you know the wall that they sent out at that time i i hadn't been designing for very long and to get asked do you want to do one and we'll give you the stuff for free to me it was worth it at that time because they sent me enough wool that um i put i think it was a set of like boot toppers and a cowl hmm. and i put the cowl on and it was on for free for so long and then you could have it as paid for but then i'd also managed to get the boot toppers out of the same free wool so that was a paid for and it was quite good because you know people would download the free one and then go oh i'll have the boot toppers to match it so i did make money out of it and i was quite happy with that yeah um but then I just thought that the way that they kicked everybody off for no reason. And and at the time, I was making the most money on there because they didn't, I don't think they charged you or something. It was just your PayPal fees, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and I had my highest amount of sales on there and I was quite happy. And then they just went, nah, see you later. Well, I don't know why they didn't come back and then say, oh, there's a commission or like yeah. a revenue fee. Because I don't be I never don't know, ever right? begrudge paying that. No. I, tell, I tell you what does boil my blood mm. of Ravelry, um, and I know most of us uh, are professional and enough and sensible enough to do it, and that there are always financial circumstances where it's perhaps difficult, and I get that. But the five dollar charge for being up to be able to upload pictures into forums and the number of designers who every gift along or every event or will have projects that are just basically lists of fucking photos that yeah. they're not prepared to pay to look. It's five dollars a year. For God's sake. It's yeah. cheaper yeah. than most patterns. And yeah. it's not in a, a platform that for the most part we don't pay for. I think everything is reasonably priced on Ravelry, personally. Well, and their really income has gone down with all of these people who've been releasing free patterns for yeah. COVID. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, there's a, a list in the 52 in 52 group every day that Christy updates, bless her heart. Yeah. Uh, and what's not, and I, I sort of troll through it and think, I'm never going to make that, I'm never going to make that. Never going to make that, never going to make that, never going to make that. Oh, that's kind of cute. Will I make it? No. 
So, whereas well, some people will just take anything that's free, though, won't they? Well, absolutely. And there's been the odd one where it's been a garment, and I've thought mm, I might make it. Well, I'll have it. But the reality is, if I really loved it, I'd have paid for it anyway. Um, yeah. At least Alicia Plummer's got a pattern out today, and I love hers. Oh, well, I'll I'll share screen and just yeah, show you. It's I like the name for this one. It's called Becoming, and she's been through quite a lot of life changes. If you follow Alicia, um, oh, lovely. She's divorced now and and moved on, and you know. I'm not not usually. Sorry. But I'm not usually a big fan of Dr. I'm not a family fan. But I like that. I would want that a lot longer. Well, but see, I think that's a, pretty and it's nice there time. with a t shirt. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, I always wear a vest underneath the tops. So, this vest top that I've got on at the moment, I would wear one of these every single day with everything and then I would just put something on the top. So that length wouldn't actually bother me. I think for me, it would be right on the belly line. Right. And I'd be thinking, yeah, needs to be a touch longer. It either needs to be below any lumps and bumps. Yeah. Or yeah. so above that whatever I'm wearing below it can skim over it. Right. So empire line. Yeah. The only the only issue I do have with that length is actually I think I would like the front to match the back. Uh, so I thought we'd look at a couple of projects. Um, I mean, that, again, she's wearing it with something underneath it. Yeah, I think it's designed for that, though, really, isn't it? I think it'd look lovely on, with a dress again, a bit like the one that um, Yvonne was making. Yeah. Um, again, we've got a bigger lady, and I think that length is very flattering on her. That actually, really, really looks lovely on her. And the colour. She's not made it too yeah. big at all, has she? No, and the and the blue on her is very flattering. Yeah, and I like the fit of the sleeves on her. Oh, I like that. Um, the one above it. Oh, this one. Yeah. I love that colour. That is what it would look like on me, actually, to be honest. I just think that's so pretty. So, yeah, I am really tempted by this one. I'm tempted by that one. Um, and there's another lady like who's got this. Sort of... Oh, she's made it in a kind of mohair, hasn't she? Has it got a touch of mohair in? I think we'll have to have a look. At... Looks like does look like it's got a little bit of a halo yeah might just be a woollier yarn than I the like others what she got um kitty pride fibers persian uh, stock persian. color is lepidolite Ooh. it's very very pretty i do like alicia because i i mean i've had a couple of her patterns and i just like the way that they're written so yeah. and I, I just say as well on this one the way this lady has got the sort of cut across if she wasn't wearing anything underneath it i suspect there's a tummy under that little floaty white top yeah green top but that curved hemline is very very flattering it's like wearing, and that would hide a multitude of belly sins it's like wearing um like a peplum isn't it yeah very very pretty i like it oh and is that alicia with the dress my goodness See, oh, she's got a dress. Cool. How rare is that? That is good. Oh, she's got her legs out and everything. They're quite white. Shh. Well, she is. She's pale. I think she's, she's a light summer. In there, isn't she? Bless her. She's a light or a soft summer, Alicia. Um, but yeah, she's. Uh, I just think it's really nice, and I like this brown as well. This sort of browny, taupey, neutral colour that this lady's picked. So yeah, I just for all I don't really do boxy, I'm really digging this. I and, like, and it's um, like four pounds sixty-eight with the tax. I didn't think that was bad. And the sizing uh intended to be worn with four to six inch positive ease, 
sample shown in setting size with six inch of positive ease. Oh, so she's got a and it goes up to 64 inch bust. Ooh. So a good range of sizes. Ooh, I don't know where I'd make it in. Um, she's used Spin Cycle Yarns Wilder, which Never is a that. Merino Sport Yarn. So Sport or DK, but no, actually Sport or a four ply because it's 26 stitches and 36 rows. But on the inner end then? Yeah, a thin DK or a sport weight or even a, a bit of a fluffy thicker I think and i don't know why but i always think that um and and i shouldn't because it actually says five ply there in my head i always put sport as between a dk and an aaron and i know it isn't i know it's between no, it's a four ply and a dk and i know that it is yeah. stop on that so i really got me again <laughs> I would wear that, do you know, um, a bit like the one that Yvonne's making, a nice little summer dress with your little strappy strap dress, and then it's getting chilly because the sun's gone in, whack it over the top. All right, so Yvonne's saying that when it was still crafty, she bought a few courses then, but otherwise used the free weekends for Blueprint. Right. And she says she's another one who always pays that fee on Ravelry because it is just $5, isn't it? And it's so helpful. helpful. I mean, yeah. Oh, she says that's a really pretty jumper and it just hopped into her cart. And, and, she, and she's, and yeah, she says, I wouldn't make the back longer either. Yeah, so you, you want the front and the back matching rather than, because the front looked like, Sometimes if you've got big boobs, it rises the front hemline up, doesn't it? Yeah, you'd have to look at short rows if you had big boobage. What, yeah. short rows in your tummy? I usually have to do um, a little bit of short rows for um, boobage and second boobage. Not for not <laughs> second tummies? Well, you know, I did for Mike. You know, and the seven bellies and all the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's just got to be done, hasn't it? Funny. But I thought that was an interesting one because I've been dithering about that since You'll it came put the, um, the link in because that was a lovely one. My copy. I need the link. Linky, linky. Oh, Elaine's with us. How are you doing tonight, Elaine? Enjoyed the sunshine today. Hi, Elaine. How are you doing? Oh, it's been lovely and sunny, isn't it? Really oh. nice out there. Oh, look, it's asking me if I'm still here. Stupid. Oh, it's a bit cheeky about that, isn't it? No. Just because I'm concentrating on looking at all these gorgeous patterns. Yeah. Yvonne says, for me, it's the butt. It sticks out and longer in the back doesn't go well with that. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely know that feeling. Yeah. yeah yeah i do like it though like you say it's very tempting it's yeah. not boxy like some other designers well and i think for me as well i could probably add some shaping under the bust to bring it in for the sort of empire waist shaping that i like um and, and then either expand to go much longer or do the ribbing and wear it with, God forbid, a dress, an empire line type dress. Right, you have to do that. I do have a dress. Jackie gave it to me. I don't know if I'll still fit into it. I did last summer, so I was a little bit less than I am now. Um, I'll see if I can fit into it. It's a yellow shift dress from Next, and it's got a sort of tunic length, and it's got a couple of pockets right on the belly. <laughs> a nice grey jumper to go with that. Not grey for me. Um, no, I would probably no. pick. It's got like a storm blue ditzy. Oh, well, that, it. Then, yeah. So I could probably go with storm blue or something like that with it, or a, a little bolero sort of cardigan to go over the top of it would make me happier. Do you know what I've got? I've got um, a really nice 
white and white it's white with a, like a gray pattern on and oh, what's the, what's the word you know like the all in one the trousers a onesie yeah like that but oh, what's the word it's not like a play suit but the play suit's got shorts whereas this has got full length trousers what do they call it dungarees no um sad yeah no <laughs> oh, i can't remember what it's called but instead of it being dress, either instead no. of it being a dress it's trousers and i love it for the summer but it is literally like these are quite wide the straps on it are tiny 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 i wonder if that jumper would look really nice with that it might yeah and it looks as well like the pattern it's got enough in it to keep you interested but it's enough of a simple pattern that you could just kind of pick it up and put it down do you know what i mean yeah it's not overwhelming it's not it's not like pattern every row or, or even every other row jumpsuit there you are everything yvonne knows literally everything that you and i are thinking and we can't get it out and she knows it yeah and it's in a second language i know and i can't even remember it in my first she's amazing thank you yvonne what would we do without her um what i did like that alicia did recently do you want me to show you this one mm -hmm. um, where's my screen on the wrong screen share screen uh, i thought this was cute it's called like uh, little t-shirt and i like the little i wouldn't have the little detail on there i don't need to underline my lower body at all um, i might have it on the sleeves and have an elbow length sleeve and then the detailing is close to my natural waist i like that even more than the last one i think that's really pretty i think that's me she's got sorry i was just about to say something is it rude if i say she's got no boobies she's very um slim and not big chested at all um we would call it a boyish figure wouldn't, wouldn't yeah but she has got a defined waist to be fair she's not got yeah i mean she's not got a boy figure she's definitely got a, she's broader shoulders and very slim hips but she does have a defined waist just not masses of boobage Hmm. you know and masses of boobage can be a real disadvantage sometimes i thought this was a beautiful color but i think she's made it far too big it is far too big has she and got it, you with the with the v-neck there with the, uh, you know in the middle yeah it's um just unfortunate that it's a bit gappy i think that's more about the knitting than it because that one's quite neat isn't it with the purple i like that color <laughs> but i like the little detail and i think for me i'd make the sleeves longer and then work out the stitch count so that i could put that detail on the bottom of the sleeves and not the body yeah because um, if you've got a larger lower body you do not need to underline it with you know the equivalent of a huge mustache <laughs> and they're just unfinished ones yeah that's a pretty yarn oh that's gorgeous oh there's burgundy hmm. looks more um more like a dark raspberry than a burgundy i think mm. oh it looks more I just think the way she sort of photographed it on the day isn't it she may have lightened the photograph like yeah, that, that looks look. like a, a good everyday basic it does it really does like she, i like the way she's got it with a shirt underneath yeah um again it's spot yarn but it's linen and to be honest i would probably i would probably make this in drop spell and just make a different size depending on what my gauge or stitches per inch were i would just calculate which size i needed to use and make a smaller size yeah, I like oh, it. Very, yeah, it would look great with that, but probably be a pain if you have to use the loo. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. But you would only put it on in the evening when you were absolutely dying of cold. Oh, Yvonne says that was her job because she was the sales assistant at a clothes store and it's called mm -hmm. Jumpsuit in German as well. So there you are. It's very 70s. It came back, didn't it? I bought it in um, the sale a couple of years back when I was going on holiday. Mm. Yeah, but I like the way that lady styled it with the um, with the shirt underneath. I think that's really pretty. It's ideal for work, isn't it, like that? Yeah, and it looks nice and smart. And, and that's the kind of sleeve I like in, as in, you know, not the length, but the way it's set in like that. Yeah, it's pretty. But I'd be putting the patterning on the sleeve, not the lower body. Do you know, it'd look really nice either side of the um, shaping. Mm. If you could be bothered. It sounds like a lot of work. I don't know. I quite like the colour that she's used. Let's have a look at that. Steel cut oats. It's very neutral, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, she's done a couple of new releases lately and, I, and that one really caught my eye. I do like her. But, yeah, the, the becoming one. I've been dithering all day and thinking, mm, do you are, don't know. I'll probably still be dithering tomorrow about the phone. <laughs> I definitely think you need a phone, not an iPad. Yeah, I don't know whether to get a slightly older one, like an iPhone 7 or something like that. Yeah, you could do. And then maybe start saving up for an iPad for at home. Mm. You know, put the put, whatever you would spend on on a top of the range one, put the difference aside mm. and then slowly add to it. Because, I mean, I don't know what you do. I know a lot of people buy their phone in with a contract and so pay for it monthly. So like 30 quid a month. But we normally pay for our handsets outright because you pay less for them. That Martin Lewis, he mm. always says, if you can pay for your phone and then literally just get a SIM only, you do pay less for the actual phone if you can do it that way around. Mm. But a lot of people can't, um, so it's fine. Yeah, I think Jake was gonna check with a guy in Barrow who's got a mobile phone shop that will be opening up again very soon. Well, I mean, it's only a couple of weeks until all shops can be opened, apparently. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about how this track and trace, if it's not working yet, is going to help with seeing six people well, outside of your household. Some guy was on the uh, news, he was anonymised, he was one of these trackers, and he said basically he got an email at 10 to 10 last night saying, oh, it's going live tomorrow, you're booked in to work in the morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Him, wasn't it? Yeah, he can't log in stuff and he couldn't log in he said he tried immediately when he saw the email it wouldn't work he thought oh well maybe it's not going to work till tomorrow morning and then it still didn't work in the morning either that's ridiculous isn't it it's just typical though isn't it let's be honest i think yeah, the whole it's part with the rest of the shambles isn't it but there we are I, I, um, I, I got kind of caught out with it yesterday though because they were the press had done this big thing about emily emily maitlis on newsline oh yeah 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 and then of course this morning she said i just was having a day off well mm. i signed a petition because i was really cross after that business with naga munchetti yeah. when yeah. they reprimanded her over making comments on a race issue when yeah. she was a woman of color for christ's sake who's been on the receiving end of racist behavior and absolutely yeah. has the perspective. And her co-host had said, what do you think, Naga? Yeah. What she's supposed to you say? say I question. So why wasn't he reprimanded? Oh, perhaps because he's a, a white bloke. It was that guy. And, and I was really cross thinking, if that's the BBC acting like idiots again. So I'd signed this petition and shared a link. And then yeah. of course it had all blown up this morning. So um, Helen Curzon was on and she was saying, oh, I think it's just the press doing their usual sort of shit storm, if you'll pardon the expression. Uh, so I've deleted the post because right. it's relevant now. If, if there's no issue, there's no issue and there's no point keeping the post. But I would have been exceptionally cross if they'd done the same as they tried to do with Naga because that was ridiculous. <laughs> They took her off air. I really like her. I think she's stunning. 
Well, um, she is beautiful. I think she can be a bit cruel to her co-presenters. There are times where she makes what she thinks is a joke and it comes across as a bit one-upmanship. And I do feel at times where she needs a bit of a slap back with, actually, that was quite mean. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she sees that. I think she, no, she can think a bit of a bit. Quick, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah, but she can be a little bit cruel. But she's I, very you know, interviewing. I think that she's a very intelligent woman. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes people who are very, very intelligent um, just go a little bit too far with it. Do you know, like the cleverness. Possibly. I don't know. I, I mean, I do like her, and I think sometimes her clothes are lovely. Although sometimes I think she's. Uh, what were you thinking when you put that on, love? But I have looked her stuff up before. I've like gone on Twitter because she'll always say what she's wearing, where where it's from, and I have looked them up before. I think she's quite stylish. I do. I think. I mean, Phil's always said to me, "There's only so, so many women that have got the bone structure to pull off." The really, really, really short hair, like what she's got, because she's barely got any hair, has she? They're usually uh, winters and, yeah, she, winters yeah. are bright springs because they've got quite defined bone structure and a very um, bold personality. Well, he always yeah. says that I couldn't pull it off. It would overwhelm you <laughs> because you've got a softer personality and you're more considerate of others' feelings. You'd, you you kind of think first and then act later sometimes and the colors that she wears she's got the skin coloring yeah to be able to carry off that dex and yeah she has and boldness of color it's like yvonne can wear much bolder colors than i could ever wear oh she, she yeah she looks she like a stunning some purples and her cool reds but if you put her in a warm red it does no favors whatsoever but i could wear a warm red you know, so it's it's horses for cars, yeah. isn't it? But yeah, um, Naga, she had some dark green, like a forest green trousers on the other day, and this brightly patterned and coloured top. Yeah, had a little bit of the green in the top, and it had a big bow thing, which was a bit OTT for me. But she looked really quite elegant in it. Whereas yeah. I would just look like a little fat brick. <laughs> <laughs> oversized things don't do me any favors whatsoever they were very wide leg trousers and of course she's got long slim legs and with me yeah. just make my legs look loads wider loads shorter wouldn't do me any favors uh, yeah so yeah but i was i'm just sat there thinking yeah i could fall out with you over that because you look amazing cow <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know me. I have been known to uh, take photos of people on the telly quite a bit. Oh, I like what you're wearing. Click. Yeah. It, well, it's the thing, isn't it? I remember going to the village coffee morning one day and Isabel was there and she said, uh, I've got a photograph to show you. You know, have you? Yeah, yeah. Um, Honeysuckle Weeks was wearing a cardigan on Foyle's Wall. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wondered, could you get one of your sample knitters to make it? And I took one, and it was this very pretty sort of angled lines of rib with bobbles in this sort of fruit and berries, elderberry frond kind of pattern. And it was an all over pattern, and it was in lace weight, and it Ooh. was all in kind of honey colour, which yeah. looked incredible on it. It was stunningly beautiful. And Isabel said, could somebody make that for me? And I, I just looked at it and I said, well, we'd have to get a pattern for a start. Um, this is a custom made piece or it's from a vintage pattern and I have no idea where I found it. I did eventually find a modern pattern, which she bought, told her to get off eBay. Yeah. Um, but the quotes that came back from the sample knitters were around about £300. Well, yeah, because that's a hours. You know, and she didn't bat an eyelid. I just put her in touch with one, so I have no idea whether she actually got them to make it. Oh, no. Um, I'd have done it myself, but I was really busy with other stuff yeah. at the time. Um, or I'd probably. Do you, know, um, do you know the movie Imitation Game? Was it? Yes. With uh, Matthew Good and uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and 
Yeah, the one about the um, the code breaking. Here and nightly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It took me twice as long to watch that movie as it should have done because I kept pausing it to photograph all the, the jumpers that they were wearing. Oh, really pretty knitwear in that. And oh, amazing. Love that movie for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> well, I like it because Matthew Good's in it. But oh, he's lovely, isn't he? That voice. It, uh, yeah. No wonder Lady Mary fell for him. Well, he's even sexier in uh, A Discovery of Witches. Oh, I've not seen that. Oh, you must get to see that. Series two was being made pre-lockdown, and I don't know whether Sky have finished it or not. But it it's just, if you watch the trailer on YouTube and listen to him doing the sort of opening lines, yeah, it makes the hair rise on the back of your neck. He's just, oh, wow. He could read a phone book. <laughs> and I would be in dreamland. <laughs> well, Henry out for him. Um, I might. Yeah, mm. I might. Um, I've always liked them tall, although Mike isn't tall. But My husband is He's about a foot taller than me. <laughs> yeah, he was six foot five. He's dropped to about six two now with his wow. back problems. But yeah. Um. Yeah, and everyone else apart from Mike that I've been out with has been very tall. Cool. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Even if he was a shorty with the. <laughs> well, I mean, at the end of the day, we're quite lucky. I mean, you're slightly taller than I am, but I'm really short. So uh, I had I had a good range of men to choose from. Even uh, Dec um, Declan Donnelly would have been taller than me bless him <laughs> oh i like deck i prefer yeah. deck mike had put on his dating profile online that he was five foot nine and i met him and we went to dinner this particular evening and i just looked him up and down and went yeah you're five foot six nice try <laughs> <laughs> and if you tell me it's six inches long i know it's that big <laughs> Why do people exaggerate that much? I mean, like, if you said one inch or maybe two inches at a push, you might get away with it. But three well, inches, you possibly can make that difference, can't it? Just standing up straight. Well, yeah. Or, you know, a couple of, it make your heels a little bit bigger on your shoes. <laughs> All right. So Yvonne said that if she wears wide leg trousers, the need to end above her ankle and it helps to keep the proportions right. Yeah, you do, it's it's where that vertical line or horizontal line cuts across the body if the horizontal is in the wrong place like the middle of a big belly or right on the base of a big just bump, like it goes. It, yeah it just makes that line seem so much wider yeah. i like this particular top that might cause the I like top, that. um because of the angles and things like that it, it does detract from some of the bumps and bumps i think it could just confuses the eye and there's so much going on that you but i love the colors of it though i think they're great on you yeah i really like these they're yeah. a touch the turquoise color is a touch bright the red i can get away with but yeah i've never really been a big red person i've got a red coat that i absolutely love and it's the one i pull out for elections it's a wool coat with a it's an a-line one oh, you're wearing yellow oh, i never found a yellow coat that was the right color up until this last election i like a uh, mustard on me but it's a boxy mustardy kind of long coat and it's nice if i wear it open rather than fastened and I could probably have gone down a size. It's more a coatigan than a, uh, yeah. I like a coatigan. Yeah, I really, really liked that. And my mum got me a khaki coloured coat. Oh, I love khaki. Birthday. I think it might have been my birthday last year. I like those kind of like, I don't know what the word is. I want to say dull, but it's not quite right. Cause like khaki and mustard, like muted. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I love those colours. I got myself last year before Caitlin and I went to London to see Hamilton. 
Um, I got a uh, mustard rain coat with a navy blue lining and I love that coat and it looks lovely on me. Really like it. Can you believe it's nearly a year since we went to London? I know. It doesn't seem possible. It's bizarre, isn't it, that this will be the 10th week of clapping? Oh, can't get over it. Oh, this week on um, on the shows must go on is hairspray, which I shall be leaving 100%, not even putting it on at all. Oh, here God, was the show that, that was in it, Duvan. Michael Ball? No, David. No. They've both played the woman. Um, well, I, in the movie it was divine. Uh, he was a big, very large bloke. And was the double of my great it was the double of my great auntie sis in many ways, the shape of him. So whenever I saw Divine with the drag wig and stuff like that and the heavy makeup and all the rest of it. It used to make me howl with laughter because that's probably what my, si my auntie sis would have looked like if they'd done her up to look like a drag artist. Oh, I love it. No, it's not. It's not my... I just don't enjoy it. I don't like the music. Um, I don't like the story. Like, I don't know. I think Hairspray is very much Marmite. Yeah, it's. Uh, I won't be watching it. But, and, and I didn't enjoy the uh, sound of music last week. No. Well, I, I, it was all right. It was okay. I didn't want to turn it off. It was, you know, it was it was okay on in the background. I wasn't 100% watching it. I was playing on my game on my iPad. And Caitlin was playing on Animal Crossing. And, you know, mm. we were talking through it, but kind of listening. And like I said to you before, if you gave me the choice between watching that version or the movie, I'd choose the movie all day long. Yeah. Without a doubt. But I didn't I didn't want to turn it off. Did I tell you that one of my parents' first dates when my dad came up to my, they met in Edinburgh when his best friend married her best friend. Okay. And my dad was best man and she was best mate. And that's how they met. And then they corresponded and dad came up to stay with the family and visit and their first sort of proper date that they went on apparently they went to the cinema yeah so oh, you what do you want to go and see and she said instantly the sound of music and they sat there and she's singing along and he said have you seen this and she said uh yeah what well but you know all the songs she said, well i've been to see it 17 times <laughs> it's it's a wonder he went out with her again <laughs> Do you know there's a lesson to be learned there? Why didn't he run? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he, I mean, they, they've always sang. In the car, they would sing. Yeah. Anything was on the radio or on the telly, they would sing. And I have a childhood memory that my brother wanted to die watching. And uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was on the telly. It was in the 70s. It was on the TV. It's the first time he and I had seen it. They had seen it at the cinemas, obviously, before we'd even arrived, probably. Yeah. But, um, but it was on. And, you know, the sort of Baron and Baroness, the two sort of aristocratic people. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I can remember my parents dancing around the living room doing, you're my little chutchy face, you're my teddy bear. Okay. And my brother, who's almost two years younger than me, sort of going absolutely gobsmacked, horrified, and like, shoot me now, please don't let my friends see this. And I'm just singing quietly along because they just sang all just my life. Yeah, at Christmas, she would sing the Christmas alphabet. Yeah. It was just the thing that if music was on, everybody would sing to it. Yeah, I never ever thought anything of it. And then we were at, it's bizarre, we were at my grandmother's funeral, I don't know how many years ago now, maybe four years, something like that. But to give you the backstory, our side of the family hadn't spoken to them for probably 20 years or more, maybe even 30 years. We'd seen them at funerals and things like that, but we hadn't spoken. They certainly weren't invited to my wedding. 
um, I wasn't having it. Um, but we were at this funeral. We had reconciled about a year before because she'd had a stroke. And that was for my granddad. It wasn't really for her sake. But we're at the funeral. And there's this quiet bit of contemplation in the crematorium afterwards where they played John Denver and his song, which was one of her favourites. Her, her top favourite was uh, Jim Reeves' I Love You Because. And they played that earlier. But they played this and we're all sat together and all of a sudden my dad started singing and I don't know, we just all joined in because we always do. And we're all sat singing away and then everybody else sort of round the room started singing away and the Salvation Army guy who'd be doing the funeral was gobsmacked at this four-part <laughs> harmony that's unconsciously going on because yeah, um, I can't read a note of music, I've, I've never learned to sing. I just know what I can sing and I can't sing and I can't tell you why. That's it. That's it. And we got to the, the sort of funeral tea afterwards. And my uncle Alan went, God, that four part harmony was beautiful. She'd have really loved that. But my grandparents were singers in the clubs and things like that. In addition to their regular work, they would go out singing and win competitions and things like that. And my dad used to pay his beer money singing in pubs and winning contests and all the rest of it. So I kind of grown up around that daft singing. So it, it, you know, if it's if it's in an advert, it, there's, I don't know which advert it is that regularly plays "Let's Go Fly a Kite," and I'll be wondering. Oh, yeah. la, 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 la. <laughs> and Jake's going, "Oh God, what advert's that from?" <laughs> but we've always sang, and um, frankly, I'm making worse though, aren't they? Do you not think the radio adverts? Because you find yourself singing those. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Oh, I try not to have if. Jake will put the mute on for Heart Radio if there's an advert. I'll press the mute button because otherwise, in a month's time, I'll be going, If you can't stop, yeah. don't get the hump. <laughs> Go. No, no, no. And, I'll, and I can remember the number of county coach builders from a Bay oh, Radio oh, advert from 30 years ago. Yeah, phone numbers, woof, email addresses. Yeah, did, yeah, did, yeah. <laughs> she was singing it. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's 5 2, Mrs. Right, we're going to call it a night. Thank you, everybody. Lovely to see you. Hope you've had a bit of fun and enjoyed the um, projects we've been looking at, the Alicia Plummer patterns and the Sheila Ty Stromberg. Links are available in the chat below the video. And I will add those onto YouTube when I put the video on there, probably tomorrow morning, but maybe tonight if I can get it downloaded tonight. Um, cool. But yeah, we're going to do our clap for carers because it's the last one and it might drag on a bit. Um, we'll see you. Is it Sunday, Emma? Sunday. Yeah. Um, I might even have some um, bigger swatches of some of the stats of like the angel top or whatever. We'll see. I'm going to make myself do some knitting, so I'll do something. Mm. Anyway, we'll see you then. I think I have to.